thank you, Narasimha, for the introduction and giving the opportunity to uh, talk about this topic. Uh, so, as Narasimha said, I'm Sideshwara Guru. I work for TURN. Uh, so, today I'm talking about the uh, making drone data open for scientific research. Uh, so, this is a basically the work in progress. You know what we are exploring and what are the thought process behind that. So, just a quick introduction. Uh, when we say drone, so what is drone? It's just nothing but it's the uh, aerial vehicle, you know, it may be controlled by the uh, on-ground remote control or on-board computer. So drone, you know, it has got different names, you know, commonly used as a UAVs or the RPAS. Uh, I liked RPAS partly because, you know, it's a gender neutral name rather than unmanned. And uh, so predominantly, you know, if it's a rotary wings, it, is, is predominantly called as a drone, and then even the big uh, wings, fixed wings, uh, you know, aerial uh, vehicles are also in this category. Uh, some are pretty big, uh, which is as big as the aircraft, and then uh, which over over the sky and then gather data. And the rotary wings, uh, the smaller one, you know, it's, it runs in a control environment, very fine scale resolution, and then uh, runs predominantly in the battery, and then get the data. So the one of the one of the main thing about the drone is, you know, it become you know quite cheap to run it, so that's why it's become quite popular in a various application. So some of the applications is, uh, in a drone a technology was started in the surveillance, and then and now currently, you know, it's a favorite of the uh, applications in the agriculture and widely in the environmental space as well. I would call it as a scientific research. And then it's it's a lot used in the disaster recovery, so especially, you know, it's very difficult to send a human being, uh, so the drones are quite popularly used. So in turn, uh, basically, uh, we use drone in the uh, remote sensing uh, capability aspect sort of the thing. Uh, in this context, you know, uh, we use drone basically uh, to de de derive fractional cover uh, to measure vegeta vegetation species composition, uh, to map vegetation characteristics, and then to do some uh, you know stock take, uh, the pastoral stock take, and then even to do the survey, flora fauna survey, kangaroo survey, etc. So for so a lot of data will be derived uh, from the measurement that is done. In the drone, uh, so if you look at, you know, there's a fair bit of the vegetation is on uh, partly because, you know, in the, in the, if you take a satellite remote sensing data, uh, the vegetation composition, I think most of the two third of the time, you know, uh, it has got the cloud cover over the earth. So a lot of data is measured. So drone is a, a really good technology which runs in you know, underneath the cloud, below the cloud, and take a you know good final resolution. Uh, pictures and then and I do the and the researchers can do the analysis so in this uh, context you know the common sensors used in drone uh, so, so in drone so basically drone is a platform and then the sensors are uh, you know attached to the uh, to the drone uh, so in our case, you know, is a fairly popular uh, things used are the uh, the multispectral uh, hyperspectral lidar and the video and the thermal infrared uh, uh, sensors. So, from a data management perspective, you know, uh, it's uh, basically uh, the it's, it's a fair bit of a challenge, partly because it's it's dynamic, both space by space and time. It's keep on moving uh, uh, at, at both the spatial and temporal scale. And then the because of its ability to capture finer scale information. You know, it's it's a massive amount of data is uh, is collected in that one, and the in the uh, so we should have a capability to basically to ingest that and then the process that data and make that data you know, available to the users. And the other part is you know there's a fair bit of the commercial companies uh, who work in the drone industry and even at the research aspects sort of the thing you know there is always a partnership uh, with the commercial entity where uh, they will run the drone and then you know collect the data and give it to the researchers uh, especially there are consultants especially in the mining uh, uh, community in the in the mining area etc. 
And the other thing you should be aware that you know you need to you need a permit to do this from a CASA to operate this, and then uh, you should be an operator. You should have a license to the operate this as well. And with all this, you know, the identifying a data owner is important. Um, I will I will come to that later why it is important. And if you look at the so for example, to make this data you know openly accessible, you know, just you know, I take a bit of a, a fair principle. Uh, uh, so the, these are the four aspect of of the principle. You know, we just see uh, how the drawn data will fit in side of the thing. So if we take the first one, you know, data is adequately described, searchable, and uh, should have an identifier. Uh, so just to give a uh, uh, just to give a uh, bit of a perspective on in the drone, you know, the data is basically the flight flight you know flight plans. And then the you know the files of the you know flight paths and the associated field data you know generally especially you know in in our case um, and then the raw data files from the uh, measurement it took and then the files and then the you know, the log from the flight and once it's the process then the all the derived products as well. And we should also provide the auxiliary files, like a QAQC files from the you know, processing. So these are the you know, different files you know, uh, that is uh, that is uh, a part of a, you know, a data publication aspect. So if you look at you know, all these are the you know, it's a related, interrelated thing. So all this data should be made available, and then the, especially for for the provenance aspects out of the thing, these all these data should be made discoverable, and then that should be accessible. Uh, from a user perspective, and then to make this you know data you know searchable and then the you know, identify. So basically, you know there should be a metadata standard to describe this data. Uh, so we so you know we use the ISO standards. Uh, we're not sure whether the you know so for example ISO 19115 completely describe everything or maybe we may have to we may have to provide a, like a customized profile of that ISO standard and then if you make it available as part of a catalog then you know it's a discoverable and then once we put it in a catalog it will have an identifier and then that's that looks fine and then the next aspect is the you know uh, the one of the principles is the data retrieval using open protocol uh, so if you look at the uh, the instruments or the sensors that are used in drone, you know it provides by default provides a uh, as a raw data, you know, from a different file format, and then even at the publication level, if you look at the, you know, the open standard, you know, in the open data policy, they say that you know uh, all the file format should be of the open format. So the file format, you know, generally in the, you know, depending on the which of the instruments. You know, it's, it may be a GIF, GeoTIFF, KML shape file, or LAS file, uh, especially in a in a point cloud aspect aspect sort of the thing. So with with the, such a kind of a veracity of the you know file format, then the tools must be uh, available as well to translate or manipulate even the analyze the data, and then the you know uh, even at the you know. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it may be worthwhile even to provide a program, you know, the R program, or Python program, where you know they should, they can access this data, and then you know, uh, so that they can they can run the analysis aspects of the thing. If it's uh, too confusing, so for example, if somebody don't know, uh, don't have a clue about you know how to access the LAS uh, uh, file, then probably it's worthwhile to provide a program so that you know it's embedded, so that you know that is embedded in the embedded in the R program, so that they can start writing the program. Uh, so, so that is one of the thing, sort of the thing, and the next one probably is the uh, the uh, the you know, data use vocabulary and qualified reference to other metadata, and then so we use a you know fair bit of a domain specific vocabulary it's like a, a GCMD is quite popular, especially keyword search first, and then uh, you know because the because the drone and then UAV technology is. Uh, as, as come so fast, probably there may be, you know, the, it may be invent some of the terminology, you know, incorporated into the vocabulary so that it's it's uh, accurately represented. Um, uh, with uh, as I was explaining the the different data types and uh, you know when each of the data type, each of the you know files should be, you know, referenced and then it should be made as a link 
and then hopefully as a persistent identifier and then all those should be a queryable as well. And then the uh, the final uh, uh, you know principle is basically data uh, metadata and domain relevant community standards with clear data usage license. Uh, so we use a an ISO standard you know it's either 115 or 139 in the domain uh, which may fit well as I said before that you know uh, maybe we may have to create a, a profile uh, to accurately represent the uh, uh, describe the data and a lot of the standard is fine uh, if you want to fit a, a the human actionable uh, in a discovery query and access that means that the human go and click couple of things uh, probably we may have to look at, look at the you know machine actionable machine actions accessible you know actionable discovery and exploration sort of the thing where you know it's a machine to machine query uh, when uh, then that may be a issue uh, partly because of the uh, so much of the interrelationship uh, uh, with the files and etc it is also depending on the you know the um, the what kind of file if we are looking at the source file then definitely that will be an issue and then the uh, we talk about the data usage you know so what it says is you know oh you should provide as an open license thing even though uh, you know we may say uh, we provide the all our data and the creative commons by attribution the identifying the owner is a key uh, partly because you know even at the creative common attribution the copyright subsists with the data and then you need to identify who owns the copyright uh, so for example if you are if you are a uh, if you are a researcher who is using a consultant to you know, collect the data so technically if you look at uh, uh, that aspect uh, the person who collect the data is the owner of that data unless you have a contractual obligation arrangement make sure that the ownership is transferable to the uh, researcher uh, so why this is important is that you know uh, uh, for the attribution aspect set of the thing so that if somebody uses your data they need to know you know who is attributed as a researcher you want the attribution to go to you not the person who just collected the data and yeah, and the thing is if somebody is owner they can do whatever they want with the data uh, the IP IP is with the owner so uh, what the what you want is the uh, as a as a principal investigator you owns the IP about the data uh, still there are a fair bit of a challenge uh, one of the thing you know uh, we face is the you know it's just the amount of data set that is you know collected you know, we still struggle to you know make that data the ingest the data into one place and then the process everything and then the delivery delivery of that data so we we think that the uh, the cloud platform you know the managed platform to do everything uh, would be a useful thing and uh, there are few initiative going on as well at the community level who are looking exactly uh, the similar problems uh, 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 so one is the OGC domain working group and the other one is the RDA interest group so with all the aspect you know we want we don't want to change a complete you know data management practice of the turn so we retrospect uh, retrofit everything to the turn data management practice so a lot of the whatever the data you know we intend to you know make the metadata and ISO standards and then catalog in the geo network and then uh, that is harvested to the you know different repositories you know discovery portals so that the data is discoverable and all the data you know, will have a clear clear you know attribution statement with creative commons by attribution and then currently we are storing you know uh, data in the FTP server and then make that link available um, and we are still in the process of you know processing a lot of uh, data uh, but having said that the uh, the uh, uh, all the raw files are there so if somebody is really interested to use that data they can process the data uh, as well and the other thing you know we are, we are still working on the you know uh, the effective you know the robust data delivery mechanism as well so that the uh, user just you know come and access the data and get the data and one of the thing you know we are working on the uh, you know still work in progress is the you know the the portal where you know user can come and get the final products so we collect uh, you know we have done a campaign across you know 11 sites across uh, australia uh, so we are working on that they called as a, a the field data and then we are working on the portal where you know all those 11 sites data is accessible as well especially at the lidar level so if you look at the uh, drone you know it it has it is quite popular uh, in the research community uh, 
you know, especially in the environmental science, uh, there is a massive uh, uh, uptake of the drone technology, partly because of the ease of use, and then the final resolution of the data it provides. And moving ahead, uh, uh, partly, you know, probably it's worthwhile to you know, build a, an IoT platform uh, for, to manage the research drone data. Uh, it's not a the, at the institution level, at the overall uh, uh, research level. So this probably enable the interconnection of devices, uh, basically based on the you know, type of sensor you use and what is the application uh, you are running, and that will enable to build a, a common data platform so that the, each of the individual doesn't you know, repeat the same grappling with the same problem. And if you look at the, at the commercial world, you know, this is already happening. Uh, there are a lot of commercial players working in this space. Uh, it may be, you know, off the shelf as well. And then uh, there are even a lot of the open source technology already you know, started appearing, uh, especially the management aspects of the thing. So what technically, uh, what we want in this one is, you know, a researcher has got a platform. They put the sensors, they collect the data, and we need a platform where that data is ingested somewhere, the processing happen, and then the uh, and the product, derived product, is basically available for the third party researcher to, to analyze that data. So at the individual level, uh, you know, people are working, but the make the everything as a, as a pipeline and then provide that as a service to the complete community. We are still working on that one. It's still a work in progress. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about this topic.